Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. The date is the 26th of June 2021 and murder is a crime in every country that I can think of. States that encourage, assist or commit homicide are called rogue, a term often used for these countries. Now I want to show you a video and I want you to take a wild guess and tell me where it's from. This is not El Salvador, this is not Honduras, not Venezuela, not even Virgin Islands or Jamaica. This is the United States of America. What you just saw is terrorism. In the United States, they call it gun violence. Incidents of terror like this strike America almost every day. There were 48 such incidents in June alone. The total number of people killed, 53. In May, there were 69 incidents of gun terror, 53 in April, 48 in March, 43 in February, and 35 in January. Total number of people killed, at least 336. Total number of people injured, more than 1,200. We are not even six months into 2021. In 2020, there were at least 615 cases of gun terror. Total number of people killed, 521. More than 2,500 injured. When terrorists attacked a school in Afghanistan in May this year, America called out the quote-unquote senseless targeting of innocent civilians. In 2020, at least 10 schools in America were attacked. How did Washington respond? By doing nothing. Let's rewind some more. In 2019, at least 441 people were killed because of gun terror in America. In 2018, 322. Total number of people killed in the last four years, 1,620. How did the U.S. respond? By doing nothing. 2,900 plus people had died in 9-11 and in response, America invaded Afghanistan. But more Americans have been killed by guns at home than in all its wars abroad. The First World War, the Second World War, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the so-called global war on terror. What is Washington doing about it? Nothing. Any idea why? Because the fault line is at home. America does not like acknowledging it. The Constitution of America gives every American the right to bear and carry arms. As a result of which, today you have more weapons in the U.S. than people. 393 million firearms for 327 million people. And this is just the official figure. The U.S. has 4% of the world's population, but 46% of the entire stock of privately owned arms. This is more than the next 25 countries combined. Why do so many Americans need arms? Anyone above the age of 18 can buy shotguns or rifles. Anyone above the age of 21 can get handguns. There is no need for a license. One just has to pass the NICS, the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. This takes less than 10 minutes. Would you believe it? And in many cases, the NICS fails to flag a criminal. I'll give you an example. In 2017, 30-year-old Devin Patrick Kelly arrived at a Texas church wearing black tactical gear, a ballistic vest, and a black face mask featuring a skull. He was carrying a Ruger AR-556 semi-automatic rifle. He killed two people outside the church, entered it, a Sunday service was on. Kelly methodically killed 25 worshippers, pausing only to reload his rifle. Turns out, Kelly should not even have been allowed to buy that rifle in the first place. This man was once convicted in a domestic violence case. And this was while serving in the Air Force. He was court-martialed. But the Air Force forgot to update that in the FBI database. The next thing you know, Kelly has killed 27 people. So much for background checks. Lapses like these are alarmingly common. Every time there's a similar incident of gun terror, the American media plays it down by branding the terrorist a perpetrator. Then authorities step in. Earlier, they would pin the blame on exposure to violent video games. Now they point the finger at mental health problems, mental illness, they say. I have a question. America has more cases of gun terror than all other developed countries, eight times more than Canada. Does this mean the U.S. also has eight times more cases of serious mental illness than Canada? No, it doesn't. What America has are lax laws. Laws that allow easy access to arms, that allow a terrorist to fire a crowd from his home hotel suite, and kill more than 50 people. U.S. policies have put millions on the line of fire. They have allowed the frequency of gun terrorism to surpass the total number of days in the calendar. 
If headlines like these were to come out of any other country, U.S. media would have screamed human rights violation, not brushed it under the carpet by labeling it as mass shooting. The White House would have cried genocide, issued lectures, slapped sanctions, moved the United Nations. America would have rallied the world to get the country to ensure its civilians drop arms. And dropping arms is the only logical thing to do. But this logic evades America when dealing with terror at home. Gun terror in the U.S. has become a silent genocide. African Americans make up just 13% of the U.S. population, but they account for 58.5% of the lives lost to gun homicide since 2017. 82% of black adults in the U.S. say gun violence is a problem. Only 39% of whites agree. American leaders have failed to address this systemic discrimination. They have failed to protect their own, failed to disarm domestic terrorists. When the U.S. invaded Iraq in 2003, George Bush told the Congress the military action was needed to disarm Iraq in pursuit of peace, stability and security. Well, why didn't the White House follow the same script at home? In 2011, when America entered Libya, President Barack Obama said the military action was a must to prevent a humanitarian catastrophe. In 2012, while speaking about the deployment of U.S. military personnel in Uganda, Obama said, U.S. combat-equipped military personnel are working to protect local populations. Well, what about protecting the locals at home first? In 2016, Obama mandated federal licenses and background checks for those dealing with firearms at gun shows or online. Did it stop gun terror? It did not. Did it check ghost weapons? It did not. You see, there's no limit to which America can go to disarm terrorists and rebel forces abroad. It will condemn violence in Africa. It will call out human rights abuses in Russia. It will show concern for India, slap sanctions against Iran. Why can't it do the same at home? In America today, you're spoiled for choice when it comes to weapons. People can buy handguns, large capacity magazines, military style rifles, assault weapons. Why do American civilians need weapons of war? perhaps to support an arms industry. Do you know how much it's worth? $63.49 billion. If American civilians dropped arms, how would manufacturers like Sturm, Ruger and Company, Smith and Wesson survive? If American presidents signed strict gun control laws, how will they survive the political force of powerful gun lobbies like the NRA, the National Rifle Association? What's playing out in America is appeasement politics, and it is flowing from the barrel of the gun. This is America prioritizing gun rights over human rights, and the result looks like this. Gun terror at bars, concerts, schools, places of worship, shopping districts, iconic places, even the Times Square. Just in May, a four-year-old girl and several others were shot at in Times Square. You know, had this been anywhere else in the world, the United States would have issued a travel warning, would have been the first to do so. But what is the White House doing to ensure the safety of thousands of tourists and students who travel to America every month? Today, 48% of Americans see gun violence as a very big problem in their country. And this division mirrors present-day United States. It determines the way people vote, the way they will vote in the upcoming midterm polls. Two things you should know. One, there's been an 8% increase in gun violence since Joe Biden took office. And two, a new president's party almost always loses the first midterm polls. Now, Biden wants to reverse this trend and he wants to counter the Republicans on his poor record on gun terror. So on the 23rd of June, the president announced what he calls a no-tolerance policy to gun violence. Tougher background checks, ban on assault weapons, high-capacity magazines, and boosting community policing. On the face of it, these are supposedly tough measures. But will they deliver any result? Here's what we say. Dropping arms is the only thing that will. America needs strict gun laws. The solution sounds that simple. And it needs political will. The strength to face hard facts, undo historical wrongs. You see, the right to life and the right to own guns are contradictory. They cannot coexist. And I repeat, had it been anywhere else in the world, America would have been the first to flag this mismatch. The date is June 26, 2021, and it's high time America drops the hypocrisy for its own sake.